my request uh, dedicated today to Mr. Kenneth Rao, who wanted to see a 340 North Point. Kenneth, here you go, buddy. Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd here with Vicious RV with the brand new, our first time going through a 340 CKTS uh, Jayco North Point. This was, let's just call a spade a spade and a duck a duck. This was absolutely Jayco saying, hey Montana, I really like your 3231. I think I can do it better. Now, whether they did it better, uh, I, I, I'm not saying. I like aspects of both of them. I will leave a link to that Montana that's similar to this in the video description, and I want you to tell me which one you think is better um, after you get to see both of them. And I don't care which video you leave me a note on, I'd love to hear it. There are some things I really like about this. What I do respect about North Point, when they see a floor plan someone else does, what I appreciate is they don't just say, I could do that. They they say, I think I could do it better, and here's what I'm going to do. Like um, One of the things they did here that I think a lot of people like is it has a traditional vertical kitchen pantry versus Montana's horizontal pantry some people like that some people didn't that's why I'm really glad to be with a group that has both sets of floor plans they also did something in the outside pass through here with a cool camp kitchen I really like because this has a huge basement I think they had the room to spare I think that's cool and if you don't like it you could always remove it so what we're looking at here um, you've got one of the best warranties out there two plus three years with allowances for full-time RVing an excellent hot cold camping package 3,000 pound trailer tow package a uh, 30,000 BTU central air system, uh, your choice between a king or a uh, queen bed, your washer dryer prepped, of course. We are totally carpets. We have whisper ducted air, um, even a separate drinking water system so you don't need to muck up a bunch of storage space with things like bottles of water. There's some really cool content in this, and frankly, one of the things that I've really come to love about North Point is like every time you turn the corner, every single thing you look at has a touch, has refinement, there's hidden storage, there's extra accent lighting. Nothing is just left plain Jane. Every single thing has thought and attention dedicated to it. And I really like that. And I can't wait to see what you guys think of it or gals or Hot Pockets, whatever. Now the 340 that we're looking at today is a sister, but not a twin to the 310 North Point. Um, uh, the main difference here is going to be like kitchen and bathroom are going to be a little different from one another. And I'd love to see kind of what you think of the two. Also, remember that Jayco does offer two decor. So today we're looking at the modern farmhouse decor. If that's not your thing, if this jelly ain't your jam, don't worry. They've got like a brown, brown, and browner kind of more traditional decor. Let's start right from the top down. We've got that double vaulted ceiling where it's vaulted inside and outside with their double truss uh, or vaulted truss roof system. And where you don't see the square, you won't hear the air because Jayco has their whisper ducted AC system, keeping this thing very cool and nice and quiet. Now, um, over here, I've got a bit of a science fiction double feature here for you. So you see, first of all, this has a nice big wide sofa. Kind of keep that in the back of your memory banks there. And then you see over here across from the theater seat, you have an additional viewing window. But unlike a lot of the other Jayco's, you see how the pantry right there in the slide, which is one of the defining qualities of this camper as compared to some of the other things out there, it separates, I think, the kitchen and the living room very, very nicely. But in case you're wondering, yes, it does have a TV. That's on a handy televator right there. And that wider sofa I told you to log in your memory banks, well, that opens up into an extra large sleeper on the back. Now, it is a short length. It's not like an 80-inch residential length, but it's nice and wide. So if you've got a couple little kiddos or if you have a couple big adults, I've spent a weekend on one of those hide beds and I really like where they put their outlets. Notice how the outlets are, uh, like, they're up high, but they're also all the way in the back, so they're out of the way. So, like, if you're not using something like a charging cable actively, it's not dangling all over the place, which I think is really nice. Uh, something else I really like, white accent lighting above the slides and um, like under a lot of the countertops in multiple rooms in the RV as opposed to the, the disco blue. I know some people like disco blue, that's fine. Um, it's not my personal preference. And that's the thing here. I'm not trying to like act like I'm some major authority on this stuff. I'm just sharing uh, a, a couple things that like I've seen and, and I've noticed on RVs. Now, that is a power theater recliner, by the way, with USB plugs, which is kind of handy. Um, something I don't want to miss, though, is I want to give you a, uh, a look at the storage up here above that rear sofa. Also, take note of the fact 
that there are side pocket stands on both sides of the sofa for storage, which I think could be like a handy board game kind of space. And then this is a cuddle compliant couch right here where it's either a love seat or a theater seat with that big drop down armrest with power outlets in that, by the way, household and USB. So you've got multiple USB plugs over there. You got some household plugs. Uh, you know, if you're running a tablet or a heat pad for your back. Oh, my, my wife's got uh, like a degenerating uh, disc thing going on. And I think that is one of those things she would really like. I never thought about that before. Put a heat on the back for mom right there, uh, or a heat pad, as it were, and I, I think everyone's gonna get along just fine. Um, the uh, We'll come back to the kitchen, which is really the focal point of the RV. I really should have done that first. Notice over here that we are carpetless. And if I get down low, you see how this is a little bit of what I call a no knee knocker dinette. There's no posts in the way of those chairs. But what's also kind of cool is that it does have an extension leaf, and this is what I call a two plus two diner where you've got two full-time chairs and two guest chairs that you can pop out when and if you want them. They store very nicely under the bed or in the master closet. You might actually be able to sneak one, maybe both of those behind the theater sofa, by the way. And um, one of the other cool things here, you got the little pop-up power tower right over your dining area. So once again, if you're, let's say you're doing a little work camping, you need a little mobile office kind of space or something. Um, or if you just want to run a phone. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff you can do there. But the kitchen over here is really just the, the main focal point of this RV. Um, I, I think it's really the defining quality of this specific floor plan. Um, first of all, one of the things I want to get uh, in tune with here is you've got like two faucets. You got the <laughs> Sir Mix-a-Lot uh, double, uh, uh, double faucet situation going on here. Well, first of all, we got the little guy down here. That is our drinking water system. So this RV basically has a Culligan jug included with it, so you don't got to lug along bottles of water, which is cool. And then when you need more countertop prep space, that giant butcher's block countertop extension can pop out when and if you need it. And something I thought about, um, it wouldn't be too awful hard if you brought along like a little folding stool or one of those fold-away guest chairs. If you've got like a little grandbaby or something like that, I don't know, maybe you want them to kind of be over here by the island, or there's power outlets down there. If you need like a griddle space, you could use it for something like that too. But over here, this uh, is uh, this is fun. This is, I, I just like things that are a little bit different. Obviously, like I said, very heavily inspired by the Montana 3231 for calling a spade a spade and a duck a duck. Now, one thing I want to talk about though, is when we look up here, you see there are dual rain sensoring uh, like Max Air style vent fans. And you might be going, why did they double those up? Um, the short answer is because since the stove top is mounted against this bathroom wall right here, you notice how it can't be vented all the way up to the ceiling. There's that open gap up there. So that is always going to be able to act like your, you know, uh, your, your steam and your heat and your smells exhaust, or you can enjoy double that. But the reason there's two of them here is because this RV is uh, capable of accepting a third air conditioner. So if you do that, the right-hand fan gets sacrificed. It, uh, it is replaced by the third air conditioner. So they always want to make sure that you have one of those big vent fans to really keep the sucker aired out. Kind of like my Aunt Rita's personal business. She's always airing out on Facebook. You know, you don't have to do that, right? <laughs> so you look at this. And when I first glanced at this, I was wondering, I'm like, that could be a waste of storage, but they utilized it in, in the same way kind of Montana did, opening that whole thing up with that sort of flip-up hood for storage. Notice that sidewall outlet right there. Uh, that is something that you can't do on a thinner wall RV. Big four burner, like insignia stove, uh, and, and symmetrical counter space on both sides of it. If I'm gonna knock this RV for something, because I try to point out what I think is smart, what I think is not, that uh, the Location of that uh, electrical fuse box, converter box right there, behind the slide, if the slide is closed, is potentially a problematic position. Not necessarily my favorite spot for it. Now you see there's three drawers on the right. Because that whole thing telescopes inside and out, it can kind of help define the kitchen a little bit more, almost like a stay out space, not to mention drawers to the floor. And in that bigger insignia stove, a bigger insignia oven which is something uh, I think a lot of people are going to appreciate. This is the CK, I almost, uh, chef's kitchen is I think what this is. If you're a campsite cook, you're gonna love it. I love the handy dandy little utensil spot. 
And I would say, boy, that'd be a nice place for a wastebasket if it weren't for the fact that in just a second, we're going to see where they already gave us an even better one. And instead of you crawling in to get to that stuff, those little slide out trays are a nice little feature to find on here. And like I said, they already gave us a spot for a wastebasket. Oh man, I'm kind of blanking on this. I gotta, I gotta double check. I think these might be prepped for uh, an RV dishwasher, now that I think about it. On the refrigerator, what we're looking at here is the, uh, I believe, 21 cubic foot residential fridge that comes standard in these. Uh, there is also an 18 cubic foot gas electric two-way. This, however, comes with an 1800 watt uh, inverter, so it can run the fridge and I think six other outlets in this RV. We'll talk more about that when we go outside. Uh, this right here is another one of the areas where I think North Point's version of this floor plan helped define itself separately from the Montana. So in the Montana, you've got just big time drawer space down here. And then above that, you've got a big chunk of countertop space. It's a little bit bigger than what we're looking at right here, but I still think that's not bad. Now above that, you do have your convection microwave. And this is a little asymmetrical, but it's not like you have a stove right next to the fridge. Where this is, I think, specifically different is because it does maintain a dedicated pantry right here. Um, some people would rather have the bigger prep space. They don't mind the the, the under-the-counter horizontal pantry. Some people, uh, that doesn't work for them. Everyone's got their own different little thing. I just want to point the two out, and then you tell me which one you think is better. And if you are like my Aunt Rita... And if you do like to air out your dirty laundry on Facebook, well, then you're going to like what I got over here because we have ourselves our central vacuum unit with handy, what I'm going to call electric dustpan on the bottom there. Because if you notice, this is all carpetless, so this is pretty easy cleaning. Although I want to acknowledge something. I'm not trying to smoke screen anybody. Jayco, um, similar to Keystone, in their big units, they are still using floor ducted heating because it does distribute heat more evenly, more effectively. So it is uh, providing, like it avoids cold spots within the RV basically. Now, if you don't like those floor vents, you can cover them up or you can buy a different camper. <laughs> we have different things for you. And up top there, you see the little hockey puck in the ceiling. That is the J voice because with Jayco, anytime you have something cool, you add the letters J-A-Y in front of it. Now, did you see how it fired up a little bit? That's because it said Jayco. Um, it's kind of like, sort of like an Alexa unit. Like, you can give it certain commands uh, that, uh, you know, what well, you can't say, like, Jayco, make me a milkshake. Um, that's not going to work, unfortunately. Look at it trying, though. <laughs> Stupid computers. Although one day they will rule us all. I will destroy you. I like what they did in this bathroom because normally when you walk into a bathroom like this, you see some kind of giant mirror right over here. When you look down, you see two sinks. But they didn't do that because jaco has been listening. They know that a lot of people go, why do I need two sinks? It's not big enough in here to have two people actually in here. So you have that big vessel sink where you can actually wash your face in it. You don't have any big cabinets in front of your face where you're going to knock your head around. And you've got awesome countertop space. And we will come back and see all of that uh, opened up in just a second. So first of all, our porcelain foot flush stool here. When you glance at it, you might look at it and say, eh, it's a little tight. But look at this photo. If you slide the shower door out of the way, that is freaking fluffy friendly right there. You've got all kinds of space. Also, um, you know, for, I don't know whether it's extra towels or, or what have you, you've got, that is either like towel hooks or you could use the wooden slat like a, uh, a towel bar. You know, how would you, uh, how would you utilize that? Oh no, you can't. That's a show. I'm sorry. I'm an idiot. That's, that's the problem here. I'm dumb. Never mind me. Okay. So, over here in the shower, this is one of those areas where that vaulted ceiling's really nice because look at me standing in this thing. My big goofball self can fit in that absolutely no problem. And then as we come down here, this nice, I mean, like walk-in kind of shower, there's not really any sort of step up to speak of. Um, you, uh, you know, so it's not like a big tub or anything. If you need more standing space, you have it. You also have that 300-pound rated foot-down seat right there. What's kind of nice about that, though, is it can flip up out of the way. Um, I I've talked to some people who have said, you know, like the little fiberglass corner showers, sometimes those things can trip them up. Now, what's neat is you don't have to use that shelf for, like, 
uh, you know, soaps and body washes and shampoos because you do have a decent little corner space there. And that is height adjustable shower hardware, which is kind of cool. I am not a fan of open bathroom storage and I will continue to moan about it until manufacturers do something about it. Wait a minute, we've got extra storage to get into here. Sorry, let me flip around. Let me actually jump in the shower for this one here. Now, the left-hand door, yeah, it's a little close to the stool, so you might wanna only put small stuff in there like toilet paper or something like that. But great drawer space down here, plenty of space for all your Lipitors and whatnot. If I'm just gonna be a little picky, maybe a little place like over here, I would remove that shelf and I put a little waste basket space in there. By the way, did you notice um, there are outlets on both sides of the countertop, um, just down below the countertop line. I don't want you to miss those. And speaking of not missing, you won't have to miss your favorite entertainment when you lay down for the night. So this is your view from the bed. This is like I'm shoved all the way against the side of the slide box over here. So you've always got pretty good viewing, especially since... This TV, if I get you up a little bit closer, which by the way, all the uh, TVs in this are Insignia Smart TVs. So if you are like a streaming media enthusiast, Hulu, Netflix, Prime, whatever, you're good. Um, taking a look down here, you do have great storage in the sea, including that little kind of hidden um, jewelry storage, as it were. I've seen a couple brands, Solitude, Cedar Creek, doing some things like that lately here. Of course, prepped and ready for stackable washer dryer, handy uh, laundry hamper there in the closet. And you have your choice here between a king or a queen bed. But since this is an electric slide, they do have space below the slide for, or uh, the bed for full storage, which right now is just occupied with a ton of stuff that comes with a camper. But the fact is, you know, you, you can uh, you can pack it right up. Did you notice though, once again, this is a big, like plenty of room to get dressed and walk past each other if someone's getting dressed kind of bedroom because they have a very deep bed slide over here. Now, when you get the king bed, you're doing the butt scoop boogie to get around the bed. And there are household outlets way down here. So you're gonna have to find the thin side stand if you are a CPAP user. I don't like the answer I just gave you, but that's the facts, Jack. If you have a queen bed, there's more room to walk around and more room for bigger machines. I know some need like oxygen condensers for people who camp at higher elevations. And thank you folks, by the way, for sharing that information with me because I'm not a CPAP user, but I know that many people are for various reasons. And uh, your information has helped me get more educated on that stuff and helped me do a better job for you. So thank you very much. If there's something I've missed, please always let me know. And now closing up for road mode, one of the things I haven't done a good job of showcasing for you is that white box in the ceiling next to that whisper ducting air baffle right there, that air return. That's basically the uh, like LTE Wi-Fi signal access point router, uh, whatever you want to call it. Now, since the bathroom's right off the hallway, which is right next to the entry door, getting in and out of here in transit, not at all a problem. Um, and those open doors right there, I know I've whined about them a lot in a lot of videos. If we're being Frank or George or Jane, I don't know which, uh, I've whined about them, certainly. <laughs> so I called the North Point guy and I'm like, listen, I've had, uh, I, I feel a certain way about this and I've put this information out to our viewers and they agree. He said, you know what? I appreciate that. We're gonna take their uh, advisory and we are going to find a way to start putting doors back on those bathroom cabinets. So your input off these videos once again has made a difference. Now, as you see, you can access the refrigerator here. Um, and uh, depending on which fridge or freezer you have, the two-way versus the, the residential, basically you can always access about 75% of it, if not better. Um, and if you like the extra time and effort we take to close things up and show you around like this, Make sure you hit subscribe if you haven't and like our video and let's step outside and see if I can't slip and fall or maybe rather avoid doing that, shall we? Now outside here, let's talk ride, handling, and safety factors. Since this is the size of fifth wheel, I think some full timers would look at for uh, you know a more mobile lifestyle versus purely park lifestyle, though I think that could work. You see you got the Moride CRE 3000 shock dampening suspension system. These are also Goodyear Endurance Beast radials. These are not your standard Goodyear tire. They're actually so much larger, you literally can't just throw them on any fifth wheel. Jayco had to custom engineer a little bit of a wide stance axle system to accommodate for those. Also, 
you have standard factory TPMS now on all of these uh, big Jayco fifth wheels. And in case you're wondering what that door is right there, that is an access panel to the back of the residential refrigerator. So, you know, if you, you need a service tech to try to, to check on something, you don't have to dismount the entire fridge to, uh, to get to it. Now, um, that black door right there, that is an access panel uh, or and a prep area for the SantaCon uh, waste uh, system. So even if you're looking at a North Point that doesn't have that, if that's something you want, that is something that we can upfit for you because it is prepped and ready for it. Of course, enclosed heated protected docking center like a lot of big fifth wheels have. That's also where your portable solar prep plug is going to be. Over here, around the corner, when you get the residential fridge or a more advanced solar package, that's where that inverter is going to be. And remember, what's really cool about that is that's not just refrigerator dedicated. That is powering um, on a camper like this, I believe six different outlets, your two refrigerators inside and outside, which is awesome. Two TVs, uh, two bedroom plugs. It's surprising me they don't have one in the bathroom, but I don't know, I'll, I'll take it. And that is where your little Jayco Culligan jug would be located. Or if you want to be fancy, you want to really blow your friends away, you call it Culligan, um, as though it's some kind of fancy French import water. By the way, if you want to seem really hoity-toity with your friends, instead of asking mayo on your sandwich, ask for aioli, which is just mayo with privilege. <laughs> Um, wherever they could, Jayco has extended their bed slides. And look how deep that is. It just, it opened up that bedroom to a huge degree and it gives us bigger breeze windows now, which I think is absolutely awesome. The uh, painted nose cap up here, it just, I, I love the symmetry of it. Um, the, the, it just kind of draws your eyes in and it really kind of points to that uh, shock dampening pin box, which goes right along with that suspension package, which by the way, you're also going to enjoy um, a uh, uh, wet bolt fasteners on all of your running gear. And if you don't know what that means, if you are planning on spending some time on the road, that means that this has uh, like suspension shackle points that can be properly lubricated so that they don't start grinding and wearing out over time. Now, like I said, they do a couple neat things on this one, such as that sweet camp kitchen in that big pass-through compartment that you just don't normally find in a layout like this or this size. And by the way, I apologize if I'm a little herky-jerky. In case you hadn't noticed, it is an ice skating rink out here. And that's just, it goes along with the job living in the Midwest and, and doing RV videos in the middle of winter. It just kind of goes along with the territory. Um, I'm, I'm used to it, but if things are a little like, Ooh, every now and then, that's why. I'm trying hard not to make you motion sick. Now, uh, North Point and Pinnacle have one of the largest front storage compartments you're gonna find out there. This is the standard base form. You can gen prep this. You can also get it with a generator. And there's room over on the right hand side, by the way, for six standard batteries. And I like how that still retains like a, uh, a storage shelf above that, even if you have all that stuff in there. So like if you have wheel chocks or X chocks or something, it just gives you more space to put, whoa. Oh, yep, see, told you, man. Woo, that's the closest I've come all season. That was close right there. Thankfully, I'm wearing some uh, kind of aggressive soled shoes that uh, caught me. Whew. You know like when you, you, you go over the hill on a roller coaster and your stomach goes, huh? that's exactly what just happened to me. And like my gut muscles are super clenched right now. Got to do some uh, RV nerd yoga over here. Anyway, this is what I was saying. I love how North Point, Jayco, finds a way to do it different. North Point and Pinnacle especially. It, they if it, when they're similar to someone else they're never you can never just say yeah it's the same they always find a plus one thing to do and in this case i think it's this really cool camp kitchen right here so that is a larger like 22 inch griddle right there but what i like about this again safety features because that's a big hot thing you got a big bowl of grease back there and you know i'm excited because my voice goes up three octave <laughs> but you've got double locks so first of all this whole tray slides out locks in place then if you want to get it further away from the RV because you're really splattering some bacon, it slides out again. But because it locks in place, if you bump it, it's not going anywhere. Now remember with the inverter, you do have a live fridge out here, which is awesome because that means that fridge works in transit, which means we have two refrigerators we can use in transit. 
that's pretty awesome. And notice there's still some leftover household outlets out here, motion lights, empty. the dump for the central vacuum, I don't know where else they could have really put it. I know I certainly don't want it next to my cooker, but uh, at the same time, I doubt you're emptying your dusty central vac at the same time you're cooking your pancakes. So I, I don't really think that's something I can rightly knock them for. And if you don't care about this, this isn't optional, this is just standard, but if you don't care about it, it can be removed. It's just a few screws holding everything in place. Let us know, we can remove it. Uh, you just tell us what you need, folks, we're gonna make it happen. You see the double magnet holdbacks and those slam latches doing their job over there. Um, behind the door, there's a couple cool things. That little black dot is an outside temperature sensor, so you can always know what the uh, weather is outdoors, although I just use my phone. Um, and then uh, the, the bigger black circle is an outside uh, cold water sprayer port. And Thank you, North Point. Putting the speakers in the skirt, not way up high in the walls. That is something I, like I said, I see where they've taken a lot of feedback and they've applied it here. That nice, like, what is it? I think 30 inch wide, six and a half foot tall, roughly residential sized door with the zero gravity stable steps and an extra large handle. You see how the handle sticks down there? So when you're skating on ice like I am, you actually got something to hold on to. Big slide side windows big windows over here on the door side, but it looks even more crazy impressive because at a glance, it looks like one giant panoramic window, but it's really just some clever decal work that sort of visually links the two. Although on the inside of the RV, uh, I certainly don't think that anyone would feel their uh, lacking visibility on this sucker. Six point hydraulic auto leveling, by the way. Um, and they're using, I think it's like Dexter transmission fluid or something like that. The reason they're using that instead of traditional hydraulic fluid is because this is a cold rated camper. And um, I don't even know if it feels right to call it a camper. Coach, more, you know, it feels, it's got more of that motorhome kind of feeling, especially you look at like the rear decals. It, they, it almost looks like they're painting a motorhome back end on this thing. But anyway, um, if it's cold, they want you to be able to run the slides and stuff. So they give you a fluid in your system that can run the slides, that can run the jacks. Although, no, I'm sorry, not the slides. These are uh, electric slides, hydraulic leveling. Pardon me. Again, I'm looking down, trying not to slip on the ice. My apologies for the distractions. Now we're not just rear camera ready. Um, we are also side view camera ready and we can get you a full observation package. Plus the extra marker lights at the, uh, the back you see how you've got the reverse travel elements in this? This has turn signal safety lighting. So if you flip on your left blinker, all the lights down the left side of the trailer blink so that other people can see what you're doing. That is one of those things. It's not necessarily exclusive to Jayco anymore, but it's pretty darn close. You wanna throw, it, this is a big fifth wheel, but it's still small enough that you might be able to do some recreational doubles towing depending on your local statutes and ordinances and things like that. Uh, for instance, in Michigan, um, I, I have to double check, geez. The last I knew is 65 foot total length or you could go up to 75 feet if you had a, res, uh, a, a recreational doubles endorsement. So some states it's even longer. Uh, it just it just really all depends on what you're doing. But the fact is Jayco has a towing hitch and wiring and safety chain hooks for you in case you wanna do it. And look, what, what? Look at this, look at that upper rear corner. They even have like security lighting back here. They didn't have to do that, it's just awesome. And I was a little afraid that's what all these roofs were going to look like, but uh, this thing's bone dry up here. So we are good to go, we are nice and safe. Uh, up here, obviously we've got fully walkable roofing, but we've also got Jayco's Magnum Truss XL6 roof system. And this is not one of those same, same things that everybody else has. Now the trusses themselves, not terribly different from what you might find in some other big high-end fifth wheels. What is a little different on this though, um, they are double vaulted inside and outside, which gives it a little bit more weight distribution and, and load bearing, but also plywood roof decking for even better load distribution. And if I'm being picky, all these black fixtures on the roof, I would prefer them to be white. I just think it would hold up a little bit better in the sun, but that being said, the one thing we don't have people complaining about with the North Point is my air conditioner can't keep up. They've got that 30,000 BTU air system. Their helix ducting system distributes that air very effectively. It is windy as all get out up here, by the way, so I hope the microphone's not getting destroyed as a result. Um, also, you've got the radiant barrier layering going through the roof, down the nose, through the underbelly. We are prepped for solar by default. Um, there are also more advanced solar packages that are now available from these from the factory. And of course, we could always build you a package. You just let us know. 
So who did it better? Jayco or Montana? I will leave you a link again to the similar Montana floor plan in the video description. And I will leave you links um, in the video description to check for pricing and availability on this RV so you can see which of our stores that carry Jayco's have one in stock and what they're asking. Um, the reason that I do it that way, remember, with different stores, they have different shipping and we will equip things differently at different stores depending on where they fall regionally. We always try to build for our local customers wherever we can. Um, so uh, short of that, like I said, let me know your good, bad, ugly, and everything in between. I've done that for you. I think they nailed it. I think they nailed this thing pretty hard. I am so glad we have this here today. Until next time, though, make sure you hit subscribe, like our video, and you take care, stay safe, have fun, and best wishes from Bishes, everyone. Bye.